Aloha Hawaii, this is Poka Lainui, and you are listening to Hawaiian Potpourri. I got a mess of uh, materials and papers all over this place. Oh, there it is. <laughs> and I couldn't find my pen at the beginning of the program. Well, uh, today is the 30th day of June in the year 2012, and it is the week in which the U.S. Supreme Court had decided the case of... Uh, whether or not the uh, Affordable Care Act, uh, the Republicans call it Obamacare, is uh, constitutional. And by and large, the uh, U.S. Supreme Court has decided that it is constitutional. There was one provision that it decided was not uh, because it sort of overstepped the Commerce Clause of the uh, federal government. But otherwise, uh, everything else is a goal. Uh, so there's been a lot of discussions, controversy, and I have uh, an article that had been written that I find to be, I guess, the most concisely stated article, and rather than reading all of the newspaper uh, statements about it, uh, this one I'm going to read and share with you, and then we can, if you want to, base any discussion from there, and we can look at many other things, what's happening in Hawaii and what's happening in other places, whether or not they're going along with it or they're going to resist it and the rest. But here we go. It says, Dear friends, even though it's been a few hours now, I'm guessing you're still pinching yourself to make sure you're not dreaming. But yes, it happened. At 10.07 this morning, the conservative chief justice of the U.S. Supreme Court, John Roberts, not only joined with the liberal justices to completely uphold almost every single part of the Obama health care law, he wrote the majority opinion himself. In fact, he went even further. When he realized that the government had poorly made its constitutional case to the court, he went searching for a clause in their argument and the Constitution that would give him the justification he needed to back the administration and to ensure that his decision would hold up legally. In other words, even though he is on the opposite side of the political fence, he wrote the Dems paper for them. Stunning. The other four justices, they just, they didn't just vote to overturn the individual mandate part of the law, they all voted to kill the entire act. The media is already spending much time talking about the mandate being the, quote, centerpiece of the law. But the real news is that if you ever have a pre-existing condition, you cannot now be denied insurance. If you are a young adult without, uh, without health insurance, you can now stay on your parents' plan until age 26. The insurance company can no longer say there is a lifetime cap to your coverage. The insurance companies are now required to spend 85 cents out of every dollar they take in on actual reimbursement for your health care, not on profit or, quote, administrative costs. Some companies have uh, been taking over 30% cut. Medicare's total percentage of their budget for administrative costs, 2%. I know that our side is not used to victories and so we're not quite sure how to respond when we get one out of the blue. For some of us, the first inclination is to point and or point out just how weak the Obama law actually is, that it doesn't provide true universal health care. 26 million will still be uninsured and that it leaves control of the system in the hands of the vultures, otherwise known as the health insurance companies. The individual mandate was a huge gift to the private insurance companies, guaranteeing them billions more from millions of new customers. And many of the key provisions of this law don't even take 
effect until 2014. And if the Republicans win in November, you can kiss all of this, all of that goodbye. So yes, the bill is highly flawed and somewhat wrong-headed. But what it is, is a huge step in the right direction. And today's court decision con comments or cements that. The right wing knows this and they are probably unraveling in some not-so-pretty ways right now. And that's why today is a great day. The right has been smacked down by one of their own. They know that we all know that the path of history has been and will continue to move toward the basic human rights that all people are entitled to see a doctor and not have to worry about losing their home because they can't afford to pay the medical bills. Those days are over and will be soon or will be soon and that is where civilization is headed. It's not headed back to the days of Oliver Twist. Today's victory is momentum. It's forward motion and we will have true universal health care in this country in the not too distant future. So take some time tonight to celebrate. This is a victory for the people. Actually more than a victory, it is a mandate that all of us must now make sure that a second term Obama continues to move the ball down the field toward a system like they have in every other first world country on the planet. He simply has to improve Medicare and then expand it to every citizen in the country. The countries that do this, their people live an average of two to four years longer than we do. Is there a reason anyone doesn't want an extra four years of their lives or that our babies would have a better chance of surviving their first year like they do in the 48 countries that have a better infant mortality rate than we do? Exactly who is opposed to this? You'd have to be a bit crazy. And that, I've come to believe, is a true divide in this country. It's not blue states versus red states, liberal versus conservative, Democrat versus Republican. The split we have in America, in America can be boiled down in its simplest form to this. On one side are the people who believe Adam and Eve rode on dinosaurs 6,000 years ago. And then there's everyone else. On that first side are the people who've been fed a diet of fear and lies and hate and who is feeding and who is feeding them? The one percent, the richest people in the country, the ones who aren't done with us yet because they still don't have enough wealth, have done their best to dumb down the population through destroying our educational system and using media to provide them with a vastly distorted sense of reality. The rich's only obstacle is that they only hold 1% of the votes in the country. So they have to try to get a slim majority of Americans to vote their way. And fear, plus keeping them stupid, usually works. So that's a battle ahead of us, organizing and mobilizing the majority of Americans to push for true universal health care, Medicare for all. At one time back in Illinois, that was the position held by Barack Obama. He will not make this happen on his own. He will only be able to do it when the mass of American people rise up and demand it. Demand it. Why not start tonight? Five years ago this week, my health care documentary, Sickle, opened in theaters across the country. I have spent the better part of the decade on this issue and for me personally, fully aware 
of the current law's limitations. I'm very happy with today's news, not because of its specifics or nuances, but because it is a road sign, and that sign points in the correct, humane, and sane direction. That makes it a great day. Yours, Michael Moore. So as you know, Michael Moore is the uh, producer of uh, specials, uh, special uh, movies, and uh, he referred to one of them being sickle. If you would like to comment on the, his opinion or generally the uh, uh, Affordable Care Act, our telephone number here is 524-1080. Uh, if you have any ideas on where the act is now going, where Hawaii will be going, and where other states of the Union will be uh, taking their uh, their states in terms of Medicaid. I think uh, there are some states, and some have already been identified, I think four of them have been identified, as not being willing to go along with uh, this so-called Obamacare and is going to essentially opt out of recei receiving uh, federal support for the initial years to provide additional uh, medical support for its poor. And uh, that, of course, is their option, and, and so that's what they will be doing. It's going to be a hard sell with the people in those states who, well, as they look across in other areas, they are seeing that people in their same condition are getting Medicaid, but they are not because of the politics of that particular state. So that's how uh, one direction some of these things are are turning to. Uh, Hawaii is fully in favor of this uh, act and Hawaii has already been moving uh, in implementing the uh, Affordable Care Act and they should be up to date by the uh, by 2014 when the the whole act comes into play. One person says, well, his solution is to simply take profits out of health care and uh, the situation should be much, much better. And this is Ralph Conway, who writes from Kailua. He says, I strongly disagree with Ann Coltier, who had written a health care crisis could be solved with those of freedom. And he, she had written this in, uh, on June 14th in this newspaper. Profit-making health insurers decide which procedures to pay for. Their choice is based on profits, not what is best for the patient. The result is some of the world's highest cost without commensurate health benefits. If we want a healthy population, we need to replace our profit-driven system with a non-profit one. Do you share that uh, view that uh, Ralph Conway, who had written an editorial letter in, and is published in Views and Voices, found in this morning's paper at page A. 10. Uh, our telephone number here is 524-1080. We'll give you a chance to express yourself on those matter matters. Uh, what else is happening with regards to Affordable Care Act? Uh, the Star Advertiser seems to say that uh, the ruling itself is a relief and uh, is generally supportive of the ruling. And who else has written? Of course, there's the, the issues go back and forth. Uh, the Republicans are <laughs> very, very upset <laughs> about uh, the ruling and, and the fact that uh, the writer of the opinion was their uh, favorite son, uh, Mr. Roberts, uh, Chief Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court, who actually turned around and uh, found in favor of the constitutionality of that law. So there's a lot of people who are very upset, and uh, I don't think there will be any suicides over this, but. Uh, 
people are hopping mad. I don't know how else to put it. On the other side, the Democrats are all uh, hopping happy. Well, most of them are. Okay, so uh, I think that's all we're going to discuss with regards to Obamacare. Everyone else seems to be discussing it. I just wanted to uh, pay some attention to it before moving on. If you would like to call and share an opinion on it, telephone number is 524-1080. Give me a call. I'll go ahead and uh, entertain your views on it. Now, moving on to other matters. There are other matters in life. (laughs) <laughs> and our listener, one of our listeners, sent me uh, a mail, and it contained uh, an article from Stars and Stripes. And it says, uh, the article says, Still a colonel, officer sentenced to reprimand, fined for fraud, adultery, bigamy. And uh, it's on page 7. I'm sorry, I don't have the... Oh, the date is uh, June 22nd. Uh, 2012. Uh, the, it's Dateline out of Germany. Colonel James Johnson III convicted of fraud, bigamy, and conduct unbecoming an officer and a gentleman was sentenced to a reprimand and a $300,000 fine last week. Hmm. Interesting uh, finds, just a reprimand, yet a very high dollar amount. The court-martial panel also imposed a sentence of five years confinement if Johnson, the former commander of the 173rd Airborne Brigade combat team, fails to pay the fine. He was not dismissed from the service and was not sentenced to forfeit his pay and allowances. His conviction all had to do with an affair he had with an Iraqi woman he met while deployed and his efforts to help her family. The June 14 hearing began when Johnson addressed the panel for the first time in the proceedings. He implored the five colonels deciding his fate to let him leave the courtroom a free man so he could protect protect the woman, Haveen al-Attar, from the damage inflicted by the pair's illicit love affair. She has nowhere to go, Johnson told the court. She's hiding in an unnamed hotel waiting to see if anybody will show will show back up to care for her. I presumably asked that, or I passionately asked that you consider that. Havin El Attar's father, who has disowned her, has threatened to send her back to Iraq. Johnson said, where she'll either live a destitute life on the streets or even be murdered in an honor killing. Her ex-husband, whom she was forced to marry, then forced to divorce when her relationship with Johnson came to light and dishonored the family, he said, has threatened to take money uh, away her beloved four-year-old daughter. I'm sorry, he he said has threatened to take, I'm sorry, he said he had threatened to take away her beloved four-year-old daughter. Where did I get money involved in that? Sorry. Okay, Johnson's convictions included failure to obey orders and conduct on becoming an officer and a gentleman. He pleaded guilty to 15 counts, two of which were later dismissed. He contested two counts of conduct on becoming, but was convicted at trial. The charges were all connected to his relationship with the El Attar family, whom he'd met on an Iraq deployment in 2005. The fam- family fled to the Netherlands as refugees in 2007. Johnson filed false travel vouchers when he visited the family beginning in 2008 and improperly used government vehicles. When he deployed to Afghanistan in 2009, he gave the family a government cell phone that racked up $80,000 in charges. Whoa. Even if you're speaking constantly, can you rack up that much money? He also steered money to Haveen's father 
Aladdin El Attar by hiring the former math teacher who had fought against Saddam Hussein and worked with the Americans as his cultural advisor for Afghanistan. In addition, he attempted to get a contract to bring water producing windmills made by a Dutch company to Afghanistan, which, if approved, would have netted El Attar, who worked for the company, more than $500,000, prosecutors said. Johnson began his statement, which was not under oath, by taking full responsibility. I deeply regret having disgraced my family, disgraced my unit, disgraced my profession, and disgraced my friends, he said. I failed the soldiers I commanded and the officers I served with for 26 years. I've lost my son and daughter. Chris Johnson, whose divorce from the colonel is not yet final, and who turned him in in an email to investigators last year, sat in the courtroom with a couple's two teenage children. You're a pathetic human being, she told him during a break. After the sentence was announced, Chris Johnson said it was insufficient and that she had wanted her estranged husband in jail. <laughs> wow. She was relieved, she said, that he was not sentenced to forfeiture and she would get to keep half of his retirement benefits <laughs> when their legal and financial affairs are settled. If he ever signs my divorce agreement, she said. <laughs> I, I, it really isn't all that funny. I think it uh, raises a lot of uh, human uh, issues and humane issues. Um, how can how can you jump all over this guy who obviously acted from his heart? You can tell him the law forbids you from falling in love, but his heart may be telling him something else. So he falls in love with a woman, and uh, uh, where did he err? He erred by acting on it. According to his wife, I don't know, it's, uh, it's part of that continuing conversation, I think, uh, that we don't have often enough. What happens and to what extent should heart be governed by law? To what extent should a promise made 30 to 40 years ago continue to hold good if circumstances itself has completely changed. And I, I think this is the whole question of love and mar marriage and divorce and, and uh, adultery and, and the rest. Uh, so there may have been some monetary gain that uh, Chris Oh no, uh, James Johnson uh, tried to steer in terms of the contracts. Uh, uh, but it's hard for me to find this person as uh, totally bad or totally good. Hmm. There's a comic strip, a comic book that was very popular, at least to me, when I was a young man, and that was called Lash LaRue. And uh, in that, uh, one of the famous I held it as famous. He's saying that no man is as good or as bad as people say he is. And uh, I think that's a case of uh, this colonel.
possibile a 